Okay, let's let's kind of talk about what the typical diet or fat loss um, plan would be for most people. All right, so it, it normally gets to a point, man. You've been kind of going through life, whatever. You know, you, you have kids. You realize you're getting a bit older. You realize you've got that middle age spread going on. Your belly's getting a bit out of control. You've developed a set of man tits, and all of a sudden, you're no really too happy with what you can what you see in the mirror every morning. Right? I, I get it, man. I've been there. It sucks. It's shit. And here's the normal pattern, right? And I know this because this is the pattern I took as well. All right, you start going down the path of massive restriction. All right, and what I mean by that, there's two ways to look at restriction, man. It's either you starve yourself and stop eating it, like, like, like hardly anything. You eat next to nothing. You might replace some of your meals with shakes, like Herbalife and all that kind of pish. All right, you're thinking, oh, it's doing me the world of good. I'm only having a shake in the morning, a shake in the afternoon, then a, a, a dinner at night. Ah, uh, what a fucking nonsense. All right, so you normally go down the path of some kind of restriction, whether it be starvation or you cut out all the, th the foods that you really love. Like you can't have biscuits because they're bad food, right? You can't have pizza because that's bad food. And you start to then create this negative relationship with certain foods because you think that that's the thing that's making you fat. But in either one of those two scenarios, like what tends to happen is you'll do all right with that for a certain period of time, but then you'll face a massive crash, all right? So, and both in different ways. So if you look at the starvation one, you'll hit a crash because you're fucking hungry. You're absolutely starving. So you'll get so far down the line and you're ravenous. So you want to eat. So you end up like your weight will plateau. You, you realize things aren't working out so well, or you'll maybe have a slip up and think, ah, oh, what's the fucking point? And then you go and stuff your face because you're so damn hungry, all right? Then you pile all your weight back on. You probably gain an extra couple of pounds and ah, oh, fuck, the whole thing starts again. If it comes down to the restriction side in the sense that you are cutting out the foods you really enjoy, a very similar thing happens in the sense that you cut out pizza, you cut out Chinese, you cut out uh, chippies, you cut out uh, chocolate and all, all the things that you really enjoy eating and you're still hungry because you're not like eating things that fill you up. You're eating like salad leaves and whatever, that fucking nonsense. But you're not enjoying what you're eating. So you get to a point where you're then craving the things that you really enjoy. You're craving pizza or you're craving things because you think in your head you can't have them. It comes down to this whole um, childlike curiosity. If you tell a, a little kid, do not push that red button, what's the kid going to do? Fucking, you watch me. Boop. They're going to push the red button. So if you're telling yourself you can't have pizza, you can't have ch uh, Chinese food, you can't have chocolate, in your head that little child's going, fucking, why can't I have that? I want that. And then as soon as somebody comes around you with it, the craving starts. You're like, I need to have it, I need to have it, I need to have it. So then when you do have it, you have it in excess. And you normally have it in excess because you know that you're probably going to start your diet again on Monday. I'm going to start on Monday. And then the restriction starts again. So you might as well go balls out now and stuff your face with absolutely everything. Right, that's a really flawed mentality to kind of take it. Right, but let's look at what happens normally when you go down that path. So especially if we look at the kind of starvation model, right? And I've, I've worked with so many clients that have, that have come to me and they try and starve themselves thin, but they just put more and more weight on over time. Maybe not even so much weight, maybe their weight stays the same, but they gain more body fat over time. Now, what they normally couple that with, and this is the second part I really want to emphasize, is you're, going to, you're maybe going to the gym and you're jumping into every class known to man, which are mostly cardio-based classes, right? They're aerobic-based classes. Or you're maybe hitting the pavements and you're going to running, or you're hitting the treadmill and you're running on the treadmill, and you're trying to smash yourself into oblivion doing loads of cardio-based exercise. Now, will cardio help you to lose weight? Yes, absolutely, 100%. If you're doing nothing at all at the moment and you went out and you just started running or you started doing, like, walking's a really, a really good way of doing this, man. But if you just started doing loads of kind of cardio-based exercise, yes, you would lose weight. Would your body shape change? Well, yes, because you would be losing weight, but you might not lose fat as, as much as you would like to. And there's a massive difference between the two. When you lose weight, you could be losing water weight, you're losing maybe a bit of body fat, you're maybe losing a bit of muscle mass as well. All right, there's a whole lot goes into losing weight. When you lose fat, you lose fat, all right? So one of the things that I always recommend to our clients is uh, try and avoid cardio where possible. You don't, I'm not saying avoid it, man. Cardio is really good for health, all right? Cardio is good for heart health. It's good for your, obviously, your cardiovascular. It's good for helping you get fitter. But when it comes to fat loss, try and avoid that as your main tool for fat loss. We try and focus on helping you to build muscle. Now, the reason that I'm saying to kind of avoid those things, right, to, or, or to limit them and not use that as your primary source of fat loss, when you go into a, a, a mode where you try and starve yourself, all right, and you're trying to starve yourself and you, you've probably heard some people saying, oh, my body's in starvation mode, that's why I'm gaining weight. Well, that's a crock of shit. There's no such thing as starvation mode. If there was, Africans wouldn't be starving and skinny as fuck. All right, that's like, it doesn't work that way, right? Maybe not Africans, Ethiopians, sorry. All right, it, it doesn't work that way. Starvation mode's not a thing. You'll also have heard people speaking about breaking your metabolism. I've been one of those people, man. I bought into that for a very brief period. Your metabolism doesn't break. It's not a fucking computer, all right? It doesn't break. However, what it does do is adapt. 
All right, so when you go through a period where you're starving yourself stupid and you're eating next to no food whatsoever, your metabolism starts to adapt. And people will think that your metabolism gets slower as you get older. That doesn't really happen. Your metabolism does adapt, but it gets slower because you get slower. You stop moving as much. You stop being as active. And because you're not as active, your metabolism doesn't need to, to kind of burn as many calories. That's why your metabolism slows down. Studies have actually shown that like, well into your 60s, 70s, whatever, it doesn't actually slow down all that much Like in, in general terms. The only reason it slows down is because you stop being so active. So to try and counteract that, we go out and we try and crucify ourselves with loads of cardio-based exercise. Now, the problem with doing cardio-based exercise, especially when we couple it with that whole starvation approach towards dieting, is we normally don't take in enough protein when we're starving ourselves because we're not eating enough food. All right? we, starve, we starve ourselves so we don't eat enough protein. And we're crucifying ourselves with exercise, which helps us to lose weight. Now, remember what I spoke about a minute ago. When you're losing weight, especially through cardio, you're losing water weight. Maybe a bit of body fat, but you're also going to be paring down muscle mass. You're going to be losing a bit of muscle mass. And if you're not eating enough protein to maintain the muscle mass you already have, which I can almost guarantee that 90% of people watching this don't eat enough protein. All right, so when you don't eat enough protein then to maintain the muscle that you have, you're just paring down your muscle. You're losing a bit of muscle. Your body's going to jettison it. But like, I don't, don't really need that. So you'll lose muscle mass. Now, because your metabolism has adapted to that kind of lower calorie intake and you've brought down your muscle mass quite a bit, your, your metabolic rate is not as high as it could be or it maybe should be for your age. So what will then tend to happen is you'll start storing a wee bit of fat. Now, of course, if you just kept on starving yourself and didn't eat at all, does that mean you would keep on storing more fat? No, because like I said, starvation mode's not a thing, man. You're not going to just then completely be, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm not eating anything at all. Look, I'm getting fat. It doesn't work that way. If you didn't eat anything at all, you'd get skinny and you'd die. All right, end off. But most people aren't doing that. What would tend to happen, like I say, when you starve yourself to a point is your metabolism adapts down the way. So you then have got this kind of baseline metabolism, but then you hit that point where you're starving yourself, especially when you're doing loads of cardio, right? You're then starving yourself and you get to the point you're so fucking hungry that you go and consume shitloads of food. You're going to absolutely stuff your face. And that normally will happen at the weekends or maybe once every couple of weeks. But you'll eat so much fucking food that you put yourself into a massive calorie surplus. Then you just gain weight. Then you gain body fat. Now, you've not got the kind of muscle mass to then keep your metabolism running high so it doesn't really kind of process that food as well as it could do. When we switch that around, and this is what we work on with our clients, we make sure that you get the right amount of food. We want to make sure you're eating enough food. Right? One of the things that people will say to me is, that's too much food, man, I'm trying to lose weight, I can't eat that much food. Yeah, well, we need to get you eating more food, man, because right now you're not eating, especially if you're a guy, man, and you're eating like 1,200 calories, that's not enough food. You need to eat more food. All right, so we need to try and get your metabolic rate back up. And we do that by getting you, first and foremost, eating enough food, but also eating enough protein, making sure you're drinking enough water. But then from there, maybe bringing back the cardio exercise a little bit, tailoring it down, and maybe switching that out completely for just walking so it's not quite so high intensity, and then getting you doing some strength training. We want to start building muscle. When you build muscle, your metabolic rate starts to increase. Now, it's not it's not a huge, like massive increase, but because you're doing the right things and you're starting to build muscle mass in your body, your, your metabolism starts acting appropriately. You're then going to notice that you'll start changing your body shape while your weight may not change. You'll notice that your body shape starts to change in the sense that you'll start losing fat. You'll start losing body fat. All right? So instead of thinking about going to exercise to burn fat, like everybody's like, oh, I need to go and do this fat burning exercise. Like, please stop that shit. Like, stop doing that. Let's focus on getting you stronger, let's focus on building a bit of muscle mass and let's focus on getting you eating the right quantity of food and the right portions, uh, the, sorry, the right um, balance of food in terms of your carbs, your fats, your proteins, vegetable intake. Let's focus on getting you doing those things so that we can get you to a point where you've got a nice healthy metabolism. When you do that, then you're going to be in a much stronger position to actually start getting rid of uh, body fat. Not because you're doing the next amazing fat melting workout that you found on YouTube. That shit's not going to work. Or going and running your knees into oblivion on the pavement when you've got like over 100 pounds to lose. That shit's just going to set you up for failure down the line because you're going to get injured. Right? Am I saying that you should never run? No, not at all, man. I run. I go out and run. I do it for mental health and I do it for, for um, cardiovascular health because I want to be fitter. That's why I do it. I don't do it to lose weight or to burn fat. I don't. It can be a handy tool to, to use in conjunction with the proper diet and a strength training routine. But using that as your primary source of fat loss, you just have to understand that you're probably not going to get to the position that you want to be in terms of body shape. Now, if you were eating a proper diet with the right amount of protein and, and using running only, would you still have the same effect happen? Probably not, because you're, you're, you're eating enough protein to maintain the muscle mass that you've got, so you're probably not going to see those same ill effects. But if you're starving yourself and trying to restrict calories massively to the point that you're fucking ravenous or you're cutting out loads and loads of food and you always find yourself in that binge restrict cycle and you're going out and pummeling yourself with cardio, 
then you're probably going to find yourself in that position where you're what we call skinny fat, right? You're going to have that kind of skinny wee body. You've lost loads of kind of weight and muscle mass, but you've still got a bit of a punch. You've still got a bit of a belly on you. Your man tits are still a bit saggy, right? That's because we're not doing the right things to actually stimulate the change in those areas. Now, again, please don't confuse it. Go, all right, Ian said go lift weights. I'll start doing loads of chest flies. That'll get rid of my man tits. No, that'll build muscle in that area, but it won't get rid of fat in that area, all right? Fat will come off as an overall entity. Again, from looking at proper nutrition, the right kind of training, and just making sure you're generally active through the day, all right? Um, so again, don't buy into that. Oh, this is a fat burning egg. No, 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 no. This will burn your belly fat. No, 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 no. That doesn't work, all right? It comes off as an overall entity, but you have to be doing the right things to facilitate that change, all right? So um, anyway, listen, I hope that made some sense for you, man. I try not to go too much into the sciencey shit for a couple of reasons. One, it bores the shit out of me and it's like, it's like, oh, fucking hell. I try and keep it as simple as I possibly can because then it makes it much, much easier for you to understand, all right? It's much easier for me to talk about as well, all right? So um, I hope that was, I hope that did make some sense. If you got any value from that, let me know. Drop your biggest takeaway in the comments and if you've got any questions around any of that at all, Again, drop it in the comments. Um, I'd be more than happy to help and obviously have a look and see what you're doing right now to see if there's something we can make some changes with to help get you on the right track because I hate seeing people stuck. All right, so uh, anyway, have an amazing rest of your Tuesday wherever you're in the world. Be happy, be healthy, be safe and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.